Dr. Gary Jacob is the CEO of Okio Pharma, which is a development stage company and has a cure for dry eye syndrome. So, uh, Dr. Jacob, let's start with just with you, your long history of bringing innovative drugs to the marketplace and what brought you to Okio. Certainly, Jane. It's a pleasure to speak with you uh, today and uh, very excited to tell you about Okio Pharma. So, uh, we are actually a a drug development, what's called a drug development company. Uh, we don't commercialize at this point. We don't market any drugs. We're in development stage. And, uh, and uh, the, the drug, the company itself, uh, Jane, was founded back in 2018 based on technology out of uh, Boston at uh, Tufts Medical Center. And uh, it went public at that time on the London Exchange. We, we now are a public company trading on NASDAQ as well. Uh, I have spent my whole adult life, to your question, in drug discovery and drug development. Um, I started actually uh, in a program at Oxford University, and then in the, in the 1990s was involved uh, with GD serial development of Celebrex, the COX-2 inhibitor, inhibitor for rheumatoid osteoarthritis. And then I moved into biotech in the 2000 uh, timeframe and actually uh, uh, am the co-inventor of two FDA-approved drugs. The one I'm most proud uh, about and I should say, um, I, I love drug discovery, drug development. It's in my DNA. Uh, it's what I love to do. And uh, there, there's also a, a special feeling in knowing that what you're doing will help people who are who have sicknesses. Uh, but in the in the 2000s, we, uh, a, along with uh, a, a colleague of mine, uh, Mr. Gabriel Cerrone, we uh, co-founded a, a company called Synergy Pharmaceuticals. And uh, we developed a drug that I had co-invented. Uh, it's marketed now by Bausch Health under the brand name of True Lance. Uh, its generic name is Placanotide. It's a drug to treat uh, primarily women's disorders, uh, functional GI disorders such as irritable bowel syndrome and chronic idiopathic constipation. Uh, uh, I uh, was CEO at the time of Synergy Pharmaceuticals. We, uh, we uh, underwent four registration trials in over 5,000 patients with two um, approvals from FDA and actually launched the drug uh, under the brand name of True Lance, and it's now marketed by uh, Bausch Health. And then, of course, I've, I've had a lot of experience in drug development, uh, CEO of, uh, of a couple of other companies, but in 2021, my colleague, Mr. Gabe Cerrone, who founded Okio, asked me to take on uh, the reins of uh, Okio Pharma as CEO. And since then, uh, we've been laser focused on taking this drug into the clinic. And so it's been a very exciting time for Okio Pharma and pleased to speak with you today. Yeah, well, and how interesting that that is in your DNA, drug development, because that, that's a great thing. I mean, we, you know, we need things to treat these ailments that we have. So that's great. Um, so sure. tell me about like some of these diseases that affect older people, the dry eye syndrome. Talk about that a little bit. Certainly. Um, so Okio Farm is developing uh, a drug to treat dry eye disease. So what is dry eye disease? Actually, uh, it's a disease. I call it a stealth disease because you hear a lot in the public uh, about cancer, Alzheimer's, uh, the variety of conditions, but you hear very little bit about uh, drug, a dry eye disease. This is a disease I call a stealth disease because there's virtually not uh, much uh, discussion about this. And yet, Jane, in, in the US alone, there are 49 million people who suffer from dry eye disease and, and uh, Literally, one out of every three people over 50 suffer from dry eye disease. It's a multifactorial disease. That means there are a number of conditions that uh, contribute to the disease, but basically it's damage to the cornea. And it uh, can be a result of poor tear production, hormonal changes as you get older, particularly in women, uh, other conditions that contribute to this damage to the cornea. You get the inflammation, you get irritation, blurring, and it's a major uh, quality of life issue for so many Americans. Yeah. Uh, again, 49 million people in the U.S. alone suffer from this uh, condition, and there's very little that ophthalmologists and physicians have to offer people with dry eye disease. Uh, sometimes people will do artificial, you know, over-the-counter uh, artificial tears and the like, but actual approved drugs, there are approved drugs but none of them work particularly well for large numbers of, uh, of people. And so we're very excited about uh, our drug, OK-101, 
which is now in clinical development in the U.S. And we're excited because we believe it'll provide a new op- a new way to really treat people with dry eye disease. Is it a drop, or what is the treatment exactly? Certainly, we 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 are uh, um, in, in clinical development, and it's uh, it is given topically as eye drops to the eye, uh, and uh, and that's one of the advantages. Actually, uh, having been in drug discovery, drug development for a long time, one of the advantages of giving a drug topically into the eye is that it uh, essentially doesn't get absorbed into the body. You don't see any, uh, any um, virtually no drug it shows up in the bloodstream systemically. And as a result, there are uh, less concerns about the potential off-target toxicities you could get with uh, cardiotox or, or kidney, uh, adrenal tox, uh, hepatotox. Those are issues with a topical drug are minimal because the drug is just not systemically available. Yeah, interesting. Now, you mentioned a phase three clinical trial. So explain what that means in terms of people who may suffer from this and how quickly might there be a treatment? Certainly, Jane. And uh, so as I'm sure everyone is aware, uh, our guardian in in the U.S. for development and approval of drugs is FDA. Mm -hmm. And FDA's mandate, of course, is safety first. Uh, and, And so... Uh, of course, um, what you really need when you're in the business of developing drugs is you need first to make sure that you do no harm. So in order to get into human studies, uh, a company needs to file what's called an IND, an I investigation new drug application. And there's a considerable amount of work. We spent 18 months pulling together to get uh, an IND filed with FDA, which we filed uh, in uh, in November of last year. And it was cleared in December. So you have to spend a considerable amount of time ensuring that the drug will do no harm. Now, when uh, people hear about clinical development involving phase one, phase two, phase three, or a registration trial, uh, what does that really mean? Uh, Well, in general, the FDA's primary concern for approval is what are called registration trials. And in, in industry, we call that a phase three trial. What are phase one and phase two trials? Phase one is typically first done in volunteers, not in patients, just determine that the drug is safe. And then of course, once you've got uh, an established what's called a, uh, a maximum tolerated dose in MTD, then you can go into phase two and then you can continue to look for safety, but also looking for the first indications of efficacy in the disease you're, you're going after. And that's typically called phase two. And you can go through two phase two trials or more. You can do early phase 2A, phase 2B. And once you believe you really got a drug that really is going to benefit and safe, then you can go into registration trials, these phase two trials. So what we are excited about, of course, is we did a pre-IND meeting, Jane, with FDA back in February of 2022, where uh, they can can confirm that we can skip phase one. Why? Because the drug is given topically. And so less concern that you would have some unexpected adverse events and the like. So we are immediately going from an IND into a phase two trial rather than phase one. That saves our investors time and money. But there's more to the story than just a phase two trial because we, uh, in discussions with FDA, have, uh, have gotten concurrence on designing this phase two trial as effectively a phase three trial. And what that means is that we are we have pre-specified primary efficacy points, which we have as part of our protocol, which is what you really have in a phase three trial. It has to be, you have to show efficacy prospectively, not retrospectively. That means you have to indicate what your primary efficacy endpoints are going to be in the trial for to qualify as a registration trial. So what's exciting for us is that this first trial in humans with our drug is not a phase one, it's a phase two, but it's designed as a phase three trial, which can not only tell us whether the drug is is as a proof of concept that it works, but that it is a potentially an approvable drug with respect to what are the requirements by FDA. Yeah. So we're excited about that. We opened just in uh, just a few weeks ago in May, a 240 patient trial in dry eye disease patients. And the exciting element of this is that we'll have top line data on this phase two trial before the end of the year. So that's why we're so excited. Well, I was gonna ask best case scenario when this might be prescribed. 
patients. Certainly. And again, um, it, it, I think most, uh, most people aren't aware how long it takes in clinical development to go from a discovery, an NDA filing, Jane, to an actual approval of a drug by FDA. In the industry, it can be 10 or more years from the discovery of the drug at, at the lab, file all the work to file the uh, IND, and then all the trials we talk about, phase one can take a year, year and a half to, to safety. Phase two can be multiple trials. Then you have to do two phase three registration trials, particularly if the trials are long-term, that can amount to many years. What's exciting for us is we're going so rapidly in, in the, uh, from the IND filing through to actually getting this drug through FDA with two independent, well-controlled phase three registration trials. But the exciting uh, element for us is that for investors, um, there's different entrance and exit points for investors. And once we have established that this drug really works, the companies that are interested in on ophthalmic drugs, uh, Alcon, Bausch, j and J, and they see a, a small company that has an exciting drug, that opens up business development opportunities for us as well. So we believe by the end of this year, this company, which is virtually unknown, we just went on NASDAQ a year ago, May of 2022. This company, which is virtually unknown, be, could be in play in terms of business development uh, down the road in a very short period of time for drug development companies. Very interesting. Um, well, Dr. Jacob, thank you so much for coming and sharing this. Best of luck as you go through this final stage of the FDA approval. And uh, maybe you can come back and let us know how it all goes. Well, thank you, Jane. It's been a pleasure speaking with you.